In the Bible, the story of Passover tells how the Israelites marked their doors so the Lord would know to spare their firstborn. The Tories of Danbury have painted stripes on their chimneys. So the British soldiers know to spare their homes the torch. Well, that was the plan. The only problem was Mr. Yankee Doodle Dumpy here couldn't stop stuffing his face long enough to warn anybody. I appreciate the invitation, but truth be told, now that I've actually played this game, it's just too disorganized for my liking. If you'll excuse me, I've got some rules to revive, some filing to catch up on, and a certain special lady waiting for me back at the office. Oh, one day, just one more story. General Arnold's passion has forced him back into the fight. It is a passion for freedom shared by so many of his countrymen. But Benedict Arnold's is a passion for more than freedom. It is a passion for honor and for glory. Maybe even for battle itself. On October 15, 1860, I wrote a letter to Abe Lincoln. Dear Sir, I am a little girl only 11 years old, but want you should be President of the United States very much, so I hope you won't think me very bold to write such a great man as you are. I have got four brothers, and part of them will vote for you anyway. And if you will let your whiskers grow, I will try to get the rest of them to vote for you. You would look a great deal better, for your face is so thin. All the ladies like whiskers and they would tease their husbands to vote for you. And then you would be president. Grace Fidel. Well, the next thing I know, Abe was elected president, and they put his picture in the paper. He had grown a beard! Don't worry, Pop. While you've been in the hospital, I kept working on the monument. See? But in the United States, Wisconsin Senator Joseph McCarthy was warned in the public that communism was a dangerous threat to America. And he claimed to have information on communist spies inside the U.S. I'm not happy. Ribbit, ribbit. I don't know, ribbit. I kind of like it.